The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let your God on whom you rely deceive you by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all other countries. They doomed them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before him. He prayed to, in the Lord's presence. O Lord, God of Israel, enthroned upon your cherubims, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Senarachba, which he has sent to taunt the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them because they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, therefore O Lord, our God, Save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayers against Senarachra, king of, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laughs you to scorn, the virgin daughter Zion. Behind you she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion saviors, survivors, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not reach this city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast the siege works against it. He shall not return, he shall return by the same way he came. Without entering the city, says the Lord, I will shield and save the city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. That night, the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back to his home in Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, 
is the city of the great king. God is with her castles. Renowned is his stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O oh God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O oh God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full. God upholds the city forever. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, do not give what is holy to dogs or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gates, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gates and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's uh, not a smart tactical decision to surround Jerusalem and then taunt God that you're going to destroy his holy city, as the king of Assyria finds out. Um, and uh, a great lesson from this, uh, from the story that we have from the second book of Kings is the importance of total reliance on God. And so at this point um, in, uh, in Jerusalem's history, uh, things have gone, uh, generally the book of Kings, both the first and second Kings, uh, things aren't going well because after um, David's son Solomon passes away, his son Rehoboam basically abandons, uh, abandons the Lord um, and the kingdom is split, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah with Jerusalem. Um, and then <clears throat> the king's generally go from bad to worse because they keep doing worse things than the previous kings. They give themselves over to idols, pagan practices, and so God allows his presence to be withdrawn. And so both kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, uh, both experience uh, worse and worse things at the hands of the surrounding pagan nations. And at this time, it's the Assyrians who are kind of one of the dominant world powers. And so they're invading and uh, they, they're surrounding Jerusalem. Um, and so in the midst of this, it's kind of, again, like a little depressing to read through the, the books of kings because you see how uh, corrupt and how evil so many of the kings are. And then in the midst of that, there's a couple good ones. There's um, Hezekiah. He's one of the good ones. There was also Josiah. And there might be another uh, one or two in there that were good that actually led reform. So that when they were kings, they threw out the pagan idols. They restored temple worship. Um, and sometimes that lasted for a little while. And sometimes there was another wicked king following them. And so Hezekiah is one of the few good kings in this long line of um, corrupt, wicked, and unfaithful kings. And at this point, you know, the kingdom of Judah, well, for most of their existence, they're not that strong, right, for politically, militarily, um, in terms of compared with the other nations. And at this time, they certainly uh, wouldn't have any kind of comparable army to be able to withstand uh, a siege uh, from the size of the army that king, the Assyrians have. And so he's really dependent, right? He's completely dependent on God's providence. And the king of Assyria is actually taunting him, right? Um, he's taunting him that there's no way that you can survive this. Just give in, give up, surrender. Uh, I, look what I've done to all the other kings of the surrounding nations. They relied on all of their gods, and their gods weren't able to save them. So why are you holding out? On the, the point that the author of the book of Kings is making is, yes, right, he's done that to all the other gods, and Israel's God is not like all the other gods. And so what is, what is Hezekiah left with? Well, he's left with prayer, right? He goes, he goes before God and pleads his cause. 
and says, you know, essentially, you see, Lord, you see what's going on. You see the wickedness, you see the uh, evil of the Assyrian army, you see the destruction they're causing, and you see how they're threatening us and they're threatening to wipe us off the face of the earth. And you also see that we can't do anything about it. Right? We are completely dependent on you. And that's, that's what he's left with. Right? He's left with prayer in the, in the face of um, completely uh, overwhelming odds. Right? And then God answers the prayer in an amazing way, and wipes out the Assyrian army. So the king wakes up, sees that his army is dead, and is like, well, I can't besiege a city by myself, so he returns home. And that's a great lesson for all of us, my brothers and sisters, is that when there are situations that we come up in our life that seem intractable, or it seems like the odds are overwhelmingly against us, we have to remember that God is all-powerful. God is all-powerful. He sees, he knows what's going on in our lives, he knows what's going on in our world and in our culture. And as frustrating and as difficult, as painful as that can seem, that the odds are stacked against us, especially in, in our culture, in our world, um, against, the, uh, against the church, and against the values of Christianity. And we have to remember that God sees all that. He knows that. And he sees, he knows our faithfulness. And it's also a great lesson that in difficult times, we need to especially turn to God and rely on God completely and totally, particularly, particularly through prayer. And so, my brothers and sisters, uh, today, let's ask the Lord for that grace that in those difficult moments of our life, whether um, globally, uh, in a culture, in a world that seems to be running away uh, from God more and more, or just individually in our own lives, when we run up into those um, seemingly impossible odds, those impossible problems, we might have the grace and the courage and the trust to turn to the Lord in prayer, knowing that he can do uh, far more than we can ask for or expect and uh, far more to bring us out of these situations and to bring us into deeper union with him. Let us now offer to our Heavenly Father our prayers and our needs. For all in the church who teach the faith, may the perfection of God's grace be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For our community leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in justly serving those whom they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, may the Lord, who is the healer of all, bring them comfort and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God's generous love strengthen us in charity and flow through us in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed, for all Holy Family parishioners who have died on this date, including Sarah Sutherland, Stephanie Wierzynski, Marie Teresa Fuller, Geraldine Lanham, and Sandra Yacklin, may they know the splendor and glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Thomas Wanbaugh, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us. And we ask you to please hear and answer these prayers and all the prayers we hold in our hearts according to your most holy will. They are all made to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of faith. Save us. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, Carl, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay, qui tollis peccata nobi, miserere on you stay, we told it at a time, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told it at a time, donat nobis pars. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. For those watching online, let us say the spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, de and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell of Satan all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us.